Good morning! Welcome to another episode of Shenanigans with Brent. Becky is on her way, so I just pull in, and Eddie's like, um, you only got a minute. I'm like, well, do I need to sit down? And he was like, well, it's better than me turning the cameras on and nobody being there. So here I am. Yay! Uh, <laughs> and so I, you know, this is good because that means we can get through, um, get through our uh, shop news without too much trouble. Uh, first off, we've got classes. Check our schedule out online. You've got Frost, um, Frosty, we're going to probably get started on today. Um, and we'll be doing it again next Wednesday if you're, if you're part of the uh, Frosty Goes to Town block of the month. Then we also have the Midnight um, blog. Do you still have that picture, Eddie? Of the Midnight? Did you get the new one? Check out our uh, website um, for the Midnight block of the month. It's going to be starting next week. We've got the first block done, which I probably should have grabbed so I could show you all. It's really nice. We've got the fabric in. Uh, block one is we're, we're getting ready to get that launched. Uh, first block will be available next week. And that's coming up. So, like I said, that's going to start next week. Um, tabletop of the month is planned for starting January 29th. I'm really enjoying this because Eddie's crawling around in front here. We're really not prepared this morning, but we started at 8.30. Too bad my mom's not logged on to see our timeliness and punctuality. Um, but Tabletop of the Month is scheduled for the 29th. I did talk to them. There may be a, de a delay in shipping, so that might get pushed out. So if you're signed up for Tabletop of the Month, give um, next week we will know for sure. ...from Friday that we're doing it. Um... So there's that. Beginner quilting starts tomorrow. If you wanted to, if you want to get on that, or you have a friend that wants to get started, it's a three-week class. We do a, we do a. Uh, it's going to be three weeks. It's a Yellow Brick Road. And the other big one, everybody was wanted. Oh, look at that! Danny's totally helping me out. Here is the first block for a block of the month, so you can kind of get an idea what it's going to look like. It's going to be made with grunge. It's very pretty. This is the midnight block of the month. It'll be starting next week. Also, starting um, February 16th, we have the Intro to Paper Piecing, back by popular demand. If you are interested, sign up for that sooner than later, um, just so that we know we have people signed up for it. That All the details are on the website, but that's going to be uh, Wednesday, uh, February 16th. We are... We do have, I don't know if we've talked about it, we do have a big paper piece, uh, foundation paper piecing project plan. Probably is not going to start till March. But um, if you want, are interested, intro to paper piecing, a good primer, primer, whatever that word is, to kind of get your, your um, get going with that. But that's going to be on the 16th. And that's pretty much all we have for classes. But now we're going to get into, did you want to slide in here, Becky? Because then we're going to talk about fabric. Oh, we could. Everything going, no, that should kill me. Yeah, the the sweat the, the, the sweatshop. The sweat yes, oh, yeah. well, the the sweatshop is in full operation and, today. And Eddie crawling on the floor on his hands and knees. Um, because one of the things that some that we somebody decided would be a really good a good thing to do. Oh, look at the behind the scenes. Really behind the scenes. He was like following with the camera. Oh. But um, <laughs> one of the things that we thought would um would be helpful oh, thank is. Thank you. All of the frosty, at least block one at this point, has been pre-cut. Not all of it. Not all of it. But that's the, ju that's but the journey that's, we're on. Yes. So you're getting a really good bang for the buck if you're doing our frosty goes to town. Oh, because you're getting a huge bang for your buck. Unless you like to cut things out. If you like to cut things out, you might be missing out on some of the fun because the first kit is and almost cut. And cut. If you like to hand sew. If you like to hand sew. It's all pre-cut for you. Yeah, you can still hand sew it even if it's pre-cut. Yeah. But if you love, yeah. In addition to that, in addition to, I know it feels short because I'm sitting down, yeah. but I'm tired. Um, no, in addition to what? I have no idea what okay. I was going to say. So that's classes. Um, I did want to get into some, we had some fabric come in. Yay! Oh, thank goodness. We we've had fa fabric. We've had fabric. Um, and having fabric with drywall. <laughs> so this panel came in. I didn't get any coordinates with it. I can't remember if I ordered coordinates, but I thought we had, we have plenty of basics to go with this. But I, this is one of those. Um, oh, great. I left that stuff in my car. This panel is, what's her face? Janet Fresh. I can't remember her name. What are you doing, Eddie? Just don't, don't worry about it? Okay. I just want to make sure people are seeing this. Hey, Danny, I need I some stuff on So you. this um, panel came in. It's a, I think it's like a yard and a half. It's a huge panel. It's really fun. You can, um, 
uh, chop it down, do some fun. That this came in. I we don't have it um, online. It just came in late yesterday. This is probably going to be like twelve or thirteen bucks a panel because you can see that it's like a yard and a quarter, yard and a half. So there's that one. The other panel that everybody was excited about is this here. You want to zoom in on this one? Ed? Yeah. Just, just tighten it up a little bit. So this came in, and everybody's like, ooh, look at the cute little animals. What's nice about this is we do have kits available because we have all of the coordinates. So you've got this guy here, which is just like a, a toss of the baby animals. There is... The, you know, that's a fantastic picture of me right there. That was really good with that t-shirt. <laughs> um, there is the um, Chewbacca. Um, there is the stripe print. Um, hey, Dee, Deb. Then Daddy, you've got a floral. Ooh, you've, got a, a, ooh, house, you've got a floral Victoria. and another coordinate here. Hand. And so, and then we've got, just got kind of a tiger stripe. But this is all the coordinates that go to the Baby Safari to make the quilt. If you go to our website, there's actually a link to the pattern. So you can um, check that out and order appropriate what you want. And that's actually on the website ready to go. Really so cute. that's that. The only other thing I've got, we've got a lot of shop news today, which is a good thing because, you know. It is a good so thing. Gonna, it's, been, it's been a little, you know. Um, other big thing, we have a dream machine that came in used. Is it this one? It is this one here. It has less than 10 million stitches on it. It's kindly used too. Very yes. kindly used. Has less than 10 million stitches on it, which is good. Um, why that angle? Go to that, the, the angle of the screen here. Eddie. I like the blackout scene. <laughs> is this camera Not this on? angle. Is it showing? Oh no, it's notes. not showing. I don't want people to read my notes. Um, <laughs> Get off so this 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 one this uh, no, dream machine this dream machine came in <laughs> and um, it's got less than ten million stitches on it and I have one call I have to make because somebody may be interested in it. Um, if you are interested in it, shoot me an email or give me a call because I doubt this is going to last the week and I've got a waiting list. So I've got one person I've got to call. If there's no interest in that and you get a hold of me sooner than later, I will put you on the, uh, you'll be next in line. Um, but the dream machines don't come in very often. This one came in, like I said, less than 10 million stitches, which is, which is, which is fairly good. Uh, fairly low stitch count considering the vintage of a dream machine too. And um, so that's here. I also had come in, Ooh, ooh. A little bit older, but I have a 13, uh, an NQ 1300, which is the predecessor to the 1350. And because it's the older model, came what in What is used, that doing in the studio? Well, we had to make room. We're going to sell that too. We're getting there, one thing at a time. Um, I so am the, so taking that out of the studio. I was going to take it out of the studio. But Before Eddie, I got here? Eddie had, it, Eddie had it all organized and looking nice, so I was like, okay, we'll leave it there. No. So that machine, that, that machine that Eddie <laughs> just put up. That's not honest. I'm working it. That, that machine Eddie just put up there, that you can get for a really good price because we have to clean out the studio. But he needed to, nobody could see it though. It didn't show up. Yeah, see if we can, no it didn't. It was on there for a minute. See? There it is. So that's a single needle, right? Single needle, free arm, which is an awesome embroidered machine. And it's a floor model, so it doesn't have a high amount of stitches. I don't even know what the stitch count is on it. But it's been here too long. And, it's and, now, in and now it's in the studio and where so, I shall not be. And yes. Well, we'll get into that. I've also got a, <laughs> I've got a ten needle faff that also needs to move because we're running out of we're running out of space around here. Uh. So buy, come buy a machine. Um, but I did have it. Like I said, a thirteen hundred came in, which is the predecessor to the popular thirteen fifty. Um, I got it for a fairly decent price. It's used. It's in good shape. So you can, there's a, it's a really nice machine, and we'll be able to do a really good price on it. So if you're interested in a second, a backup sewing machine, or a new one, to an upgrade, it's a nice machine um, that'll be reasonably priced. That's all I've got for shop news. Um, like I said, come buy a sewing machine, because that's the best way to clean this place is to just send stuff home with other people. So... <laughs> You're collecting again. I am not collecting. <laughs> You're collecting I have no again. desire to collect machines. <laughs> I mean, I like the old vintage ones, but anyway. Okay. Oh, 
oh, I'm in trouble. I just looked at my agenda and realized I forgot to do something. Oh, anyway. Oh, I bet I know what it is. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Becky for quiz time. It's quiz time. Yes. Yay! And I'm gonna, quiz time! And since you came in late, I'm going to sneak out for a minute. One, to... one question based on last week's show. I need one answer. Winner gets $10 GC, i.e. gift certificate, to come in and spend at Four Pines. We do not send the gift certificates to you. You must come into the store to get your gift certificate. Or if you're ordering online, I think we can apply it that way. But we don't just, we don't mail out a paper gift certificate for those who are wondering where those are. They're on their account. They're in your account here at the store. So if you come and go place an order by phone or come and spend the money, then you will be rewarded your $10 discount. Okay, clearing that up because that was an issue last week. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not your fault. Okay. So I just wanted to clear that up for all these in FBQ land. Okay, now let's get to the quiz. Last week, in last week's show, I mentioned two products that I had in the turbo tip feature or segment I should say two products name one of them name one of them two products in turbo tips last week oh Danny's dancing today we got camera on the crew in the back we get a full house today and that's what that's when Danny thinks I'm running <laughs> Two products, Solar's Aid, yes, and Sticky Tape. Uh, not Sticky Tape, almost well, Solar's Aid, yes. So did they just need no, to name it, one or two? They needed to name one, but no, it wasn't one to understand. Well, Solar's Aid is the winner, Gene again. Yeah, Gene again, Whoa. Yeah. Close, Deb, it's glueless tape, which is why I'm not giving you it for uh, sticky, sticky tape. Sticky tape, yes. Because it's glueless tape. Glueless tape, But okay. Solar's Aid, Gene again, you're hot. <laughs> Ten dollar G C team for so is it. Not so Gene's like that that guy on Jeopardy that won for so long. tape. Gene is hot. Yeah. You've got that one. Well, sir. Okay, now my question is, Danny, you remember what so is eight is for? Oh, that's a good question. So is eight. In fact, just I just, curious. I've sold it two or three times since that. So just curious as to to what I use so or what not me. The world uses so is eight for. Just curious. But that's quiz of the week. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Where are we now? Um, okay, that was quilt oh, so of the oh, week, oh. which I have quilt of the week. You do? I do. Help with thread issues, yes, and especially cotton threads during the dry season. I don't know if I showed this Cotton threads during the dry season. When we had done the... Um, the Good job, Ann. The, uh, we, I don't know thread if I showed lubricant, up. yes, yes, Gene. The, the they sample. did listen. Oh. We had a sample of this hanging in the shop, oh, the and kitty. I only had one person take me up on okay, making it, and I love this quilt. The kitty cat quilt. Oh and, and it's quilted Louis for no other reason than I love the quilt. Eddie, zoom in on some of those uh, cats for me, Eddie. Or zoom in and I'll move it so kitty they can see the cats. Kitty cats riding a reindeer. Yeah, I mean, that is fantastic stuff. Look at just the cats on this. This is a fantastic, fun quilt of cats just <laughs> having Christmas. <laughs> And I love it, and that's the only reason it made it. I have no special story about it. It's just I it's, love this quilt. It's very kitty friendly. And um, it's so, cute. yes, Amanda made that. It's very cute. But that doesn't surprise me. Yay, Amanda! Yes. Quilt of the week. Quilt of the week. So that's but that's one of my favorite. Like I said, it's one of my favorite. I love the fabric line, and it's a fantastic fabric line. It's weird and campy, and you can't. Take it serious, but like if you're a cat lady and you came in and oh, took it serious. Oh, there are a lot of cat ladies. Yeah, but there's if you were chicken like chicken ladies, there's cat. Yeah, ladies. but if you were like took that like serious as a cat fabric, like oh, it's so cute. Yeah. Instead of yeah. laughing at the ridiculousness of it. Yeah, I don't, it is cute. It is. Obviously, but it's, Amanda <laughs> loves it. Yes, and she's a cat yes. cat lady. Yeah, she's an aspiring cat lady. She she is a cat lady. Yeah, but she's married. Can you be married she's, to be a cat lady? Yeah, because he's a cat guy. Okay. I wasn't, I if wasn't you marry sure. a cat guy, you can be a cat couple. Oh, that's kind of... That sounds like some weird TLC Brrr. show. The cat couple. The cat couple. Okay. Anyway. Okay, that was a uh, quote of the week. Yay! Yay! Congratulations, Amanda. Moving on to Turbo Tips. Okay, you're going to help me out with this Turbo Tip. There's actually two again. I'm hot on my Turbo Tips. Sweet. Whoosh. 
On fire. On fire. On fire. These came up. This is where I usually get my tips. These came up. We had a, uh, a couple of us did a three-day virtual retreat. Yeah, and nobody died. Nobody died. I, I still <laughs> don't think my gut has been completely repaired because I laughed so hard at some of the shenanigans that went on. And to understand, I think there's open bottles of no, wine. No, that's not point. why there was shenanigans. I'm just okay? saying it. I'm just saying it was I'm there. I'm just gonna throw the a certain somebody off on the, the, the bus. The evidence was there. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Brenda, who was at the retreat, goes running to the door to let somebody in, mm -hmm. and she knocks the desk of one of the people who shall remain nameless, Diana. Um, knocks the desk and Di and I'm like, oh my God, Brenda, are you okay? Are you okay? Because she's yeah. like limping like this. And Diana goes, oh, my embroidery! <laughs> <laughs> I cannot make this up. I said, that's drilled in my brain forever. Diana says to me, save the embroidery and the babies. In that order. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, one of the things that we were talking about was how do I get a basting stitch around my embroidery design? Now it's going to be a little different on the dream machine. I'm sure it's under a different menu. But I said to them, well, I don't remember all this stuff in my head. I look it up. How do you look it up? Can we have this camera on? It's on. No, I just need to put it on Oh, there screen. we go. Okay. How, so I'm like, I don't remember where all the buttons are, but I do remember where I can get help to find the button. Is that button there? Is that yes. Where yes. Now this is on all your. All your high-end brothers have that little yes. help. Yes. So let's go find how I put a basting stitch on, Brent. Do you want it in the operation, operation guide? Operation guide. You want embroidery, or are we talking embroidery? We're talking embroidery, basic operation. Yeah. Um, My machine's a little faster than this. Yeah. Eh, 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 eh. Basically, your manuals are all on your machines. So you go. And if you update your machines, oh, that's not what I want. Basic operation, maybe. Okay. okay, those are one? just pictures. I don't like those. Okay, so you're thinking of the, the, the Luminaire has, yeah. it all, has the PDF oh, file. only the Luminaire has yeah. the PDF. Oh, this one that's have... a disappointment. See, normally I have a Luminaire sitting here. Where? Yes. But I'm still waiting on a board. But so I can't see... even show them how to do this on this machine. Well, I'm just going to kind of show Well, then show go show them where it is. I was bragging about how yeah, you, back up here, Eddie. you don't need to have the manuals beside you. For the Dream Machine, they did not put the PDF manual on Okay, here. but it must be under something. Oh, no, not, no, it's not going to be nearly as um, comprehensive as the Luminaire. This is just going to give you, like, basic, like, say, for example, um, oh, I'm how do I put my, how do I put my... And that's why you should buy a Luminaire. Yes, but this has basic, what I like about this, this is me because I'm kind of, Yes, can you take it take it away, Sam? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you. This is what I like There's about this. There's some nice this. videos. Why can't that be used at this time? Oh, because. Oh, we're doing well. Did well, you need to go down or something? I don't know. No? I don't know why it won't let me do it. Oh well, this is stinking. Well, anyway, you can go into the sewing guide. Which it's not telling me why it can't be used. This is this is fantastic um, yeah. television. Well, but I, yeah, usually I like the sewing guide because you can look at different pad, different stitches and know what they're used for and all that. So that's go to home first. Maybe maybe if you go out. Oh, maybe it's because I was in embroidery. Because the, the the thing had moved that way. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, it could be because if you okay, go, what's nice? Sewing guide. Yeah, there because the go. reason all it was right. doing that, and I can tell you why, is we're in sewing mode. What's cool about this? You've got all these different things. So like, say I want to know what a bar tack is. Oh, I don't know what Bartak is. Let me put Bartak. Tells you what to use it for. It's going to show you up here what you need to do. Um, you need an A foot, and the stitch itself is 422. And you can just kind of scroll through your different pages, and it shows you exactly step by step how to do it. And then what's really nice is when I hit return, return, OK, notice my machine is now set up for Bartak. 
Oh, that because is kind of cool. And that's that's what I was just looking that. at. That's and that cool. and that's why it was telling me that they're not operational because we weren't in sewing mode and we're trying to get into these sewing yep. um, things. Okay. So that's so that's really helpful if you're just learning to sew or you're like, what is that? What does that do? Um, and now the the pattern explanation is kind of cool because say we're we're doing that guy right there. Uh, what, what's that stitch good for? I don't know. That's a reinforcing of heavy fabrics. Overcast so it, stitching. so okay. this is this yeah. is how I learn a lot of my sewing. So I'm like, what is this for? I just throw it in here and then go to and then and go there and it tells yes. you. So oh, the dream machine cool. is really geared a lot towards the sewing side of it for these sort of things. Okay. Um, it's the luminaire. They realize that embroidery is the future. <laughs> so, well, the whole PD, the whole yeah. manual. Yeah, the whole PDF. Yeah, and so. it's searchable. Yeah. that's what I wanted so, to demo. So so you I definitely have more. Um, there's definitely more tech op, more help options built into the luminaire. The dream machine on the embroidery side is going to be a little light on information, um, Can you... but you do have the basic operation guide. Okay. But you're not going to get super into in depth, like not you're not going to get the kind of in depth information that you're getting on your specific stitches that you can get for the sewing side on the dream machine. The luminaire has the built-in PDF um, so, manual, and it's searchable. And it's searchable. And what's nice about the PDF manual on the luminaire is anytime you up update your luminaire, it mm -hmm. updates the PDF yeah. so that the manual on the machine matches the functions that are on the machine. Yeah. That's one of you the... You don't, don't print them out. I see people all the time yep. printing them out and going to Staples with you, and I'm like, they're going to get outdated. Yeah, so and that's bother. one of the reasons, I mean, at first I thought they were just not putting manuals because they were cheaping out, but it was kind of foresight on their part because if they were giving you a manual with your machine and then you know, three updates down the road, you're consulting with your manual, it's not right. That's why they didn't, that's why no luminaires come with a manual. The manual's built into the machine so that it's always up to date with um, whatever the latest update on the machine is. Yeah, I was really, I'm really impressed with, that's how I look up all, almost everything. But can we go in embroidery and see if you can find the basting stitch button oh, yeah. on this I guy? I, I know right where the basting stitch um, is. There's at. two things that I wanted to let you know about the basting stitch. One is in your settings, it will, you will set how far your basting stitch should be away from. I'm talking about a basting stitch all, all around the whole design. Um, in settings, you will... Since we're talking about crazy cat people, we're going to do okay, cat. Okay, cat. That's good. Yeah. Well, basting stitch is basically a way to kind of anchor your fabric down to your stabilizer one more step. And in settings, you can tell it how far away from your design that basting stitch needs to be. And in, then in this... So in, in embroidery mode, you can apply the basting stitch. Yeah, so the basting stitch, um, like with Dream Machines, you have two edit screens. You have yeah. your first edit screen with embroidery in the bottom, the second edit screen with memory in the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> On the Luminaire, the second edit screen is called Layout, layout. which makes a lot more sense. And that's where the basting stitch yeah, is. Yeah, so if you hit Edit on the second edit screen, and we know it's the second one because we have memory down there, mm -hmm. you come in here, and that button right there. It doesn't, to me, that little icon, it looks like a flower. Yes. It To me, it, it doesn't look like it should be a basing stitch. But that's that, what it is. Yeah, because you'll notice if you... Now, if you go back to... You see how that... Uh, yeah, you can see on there how it's showing up. Yep. Okay, but if you go back now, return... Do you want me to leave no, the No, leave it on. Yeah, yep. okay. And return. Okay, so somewhere in settings, they've determined how that spacing should be. Yep, settings is up here. Okay. And, in fact, I it's just, not on that page. It's not on this page, but, but it's, I, right, near that it's right page. here. There it goes. So, embroidery basting distance, right so there. So, somebody has set this machine to be almost a quarter of an inch. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why I would have made it a quarter of an inch even. But anyway, good enough. Okay, so that's where the distance is set. Now, say, okay, Brent, and we're going to go back to the embroidery screen. Okay. Did, 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 did. Now, I want you to go into embroidery mode. And I want you to do plus or minus, the needle plus or minus. Oh, yeah, needle plus or minus, yeah. And you'll see what the first step is. It automatically included the first step becomes the basting stitch. It actually adds that to your steps. 
which some people can find confusing because they are following the steps in the book, but they've added and like, a where basting did this, stitch. Where did this black, where did this number one black come from? Yeah, and that is indeed the basting stitch. Can you go to um, the next color? Yeah. And you'll start to see the cat. No, just hit that. Yep, right. Oh, e, e, ah, there you go. Now you see it's doing the kitty cat. Yeah, like there's, there's the would. ears, yeah. But it actually puts that basting stitch on this file. So yep. if I were to save this file right now, I'm saving the basting stitch. However, this is interesting. It's kind of a long turbo tip, but I use the basting stitch, put it on my my pattern, and then I moved my kitty cat to a different location, mm -hmm. and the basting stitch does not move with the kitty cat. Um. So you want to make sure you put your basting stitch on after you have your kitty cat where I'm you want it. Pretty, when did you move it? In the layout or the edit screen? In layout. In layout, everything should move together. Well, maybe it was edited then. I don't know. Yeah, but you got to be careful. Yeah. What, and then that, I would recommend adding the basing stitch yes. after you have placed the design. One after of, you have moved, if you're going to move your design, put that basing stitch on after you say, yes, this is where I want my and design we'll, to let's, be. We'll talk about this real quick. Because the, well, um, that's sort of one of our other things. But go you ahead. want me not talk about it? No, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, so it's like I said, about, again, again on the Dream Machine, you have two... You have edit one and edit, edit two. two. Edit <laughs> one is if you move it, and, and you'll have a move. You'll have move there. Yep. And if you go to embroidery, you'll notice you have move again. A move again. The first move. And you're better off always choosing rotate. Yes, because rotate will let you do you both. You can you move and rotate at the same time. But in the first edit screen, when I move, I'm just moving individual components of the. So you'll notice how I'm moving the basing oh, stitch on there. Oh, maybe that's what I did. Maybe that's what I and did. And then if I if I go to there, I'm moving the cat. So that's in the first edit. But screen. they're both in the same. Oh, because you did it as an ad, you think? Because they're both in the same thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but that, but we're that's in the we're did. in the edit mode. So that's okay. the first edit. If you go to the second edit, which is layout on a on a um, luminaire, luminaire, there's something you're going to notice is you get move. Now, on the first edit, we had to select to select which of the components we wanted to move. We don't have that select button here because in the layout or the second edit, it moves everything as a unit. So if, you want to, if you're working on placement, trying to get something where you want it, but you want to move the entire pattern, mm -hmm. do the move in the second edit screen, not the first, or the ah, layout that's screen. That's probably what I did. Yeah, or the layout screen on a Luminaire or an Essence or whatever the newer, the newer models is. So. Or add the basting stitch after you know it's where you want yes. it to be, which is what I'm going to do for now. Yes. <laughs> so I don't that have works, to, that works so too. So I don't have to keep track of it. So that that um, so it was going to be looking stuff up. But now now we have to talk about the height of the presser foot. Oh, good. That's I, I, the other thing. I was gonna, I wasn't sure if I was going to have to do that in my uh, in my uh, workbench or if we we're going to if you were going to get into it. We course. we need to talk about the height of the presser foot because Back. I continued to sputter about thread. Um, I moved over to a polyester thread, and uh, sewing aid was not my rescue person, and I. Uh, was getting ready to um to kill somebody yeah it wasn't a pleasant day i had a big project i was working on and it seems like every 10 stitches i was not happy camper and then you it would stop and i'd come over and troubleshoot and we'd yep. try something and it didn't quite work and it was pulling up it was yep. pulling up and making loops on top of my and the and then when I top of my machine. finally went over to look at it when it was actually running mm -hmm. i'm like oh yeah that's an easy fix this is what he says after I've fought for three weeks, but okay. And, people. I, and, and this, this is why we're talking about it, though, because yeah. it was an easy fix, and yes. I never even I hadn't, thought I, about it. It had slipped my mind. We ran into this once a few years back when somebody used my mom's machine and played with this setting. Um, if you'll notice here, there is a presser foot we're height in setting. settings, yes. And this is actually kind of high. It's very high. 7.5 millimeters is it. Now what that, the black is showing you what the default, default is. is. So that's how it comes set in. And you can actually go you can cut it in half. Now the reason hers was probably higher and likewise for me is I had done some quilting yes. with some batting. So I had raised my presser foot up to accommodate yeah, the because batting. Because what that adjustment is going to do as I pan over here is that's going to set how high the foot is off of your embroidery piece mm -hmm. and 
what's important there is if you're too high up, what happens is the, the piece jumps because the, the foot's not holding it down. So you see the, what they call flagging, where, the, uh, where you're going to see in your hoop that the fabric is kind of going up and down and vibrating. And that causes issues with the thread because of the mechanics of sewing, the fact that the, 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 the fabric is staying on that needle a little too long, it throws off um, your, your hook formation, it throws, off the, it throws off a lot of stuff. Yeah, I had more puckers. Too. Yeah, you'll get more pucker. And, and you know that your presser foot is too high. Like I said, if you leave it on default, you'll be fine. But the reason I noticed it right away is she's sewing, and, the, and it looks like it's vibrating. It was just up and down, up and down, up and down. And I'm like, that's, that's your problem. So in, the, in long arming world, they call that flagging. I don't know if they call it the same in embroidery. I didn't even think of that. Um, but that is definitely um, that's something to be aware of because it wasn't pretty. Look at my fingers. Look how they I look should, good. I should, I should be a finger model. They look good. Um, so we had adjusted the top tension, thinking we needed yeah. to pull the thread up harder. Yeah. Um, when in fact, what we needed to do was lower the presser foot. Yep, to keep and the fat. Chiefly, yep. after I lowered the presser foot, I had to put my top tension back. The, yep. Because I started to get bobbin thread. Well, on, one of the things that, that um, if, so. you, if you study how the stitch is formed, the, um, the physics of the needle going through the fabric actually helps throw the, the thread loop off the back. Okay. So if the needle can't withdraw from the fabric properly or it's, it's got too much give going in, mm -hmm. then it doesn't throw a loop properly. And so that's what you were running into. I mean, you can get into yeah. the technical side I of it. I changed needles. I changed bobbins. I changed... But that's... Bobbin casings. Yep. Uh, and, and, and it's easy to see. And the answer was lower thy pressive foot. And once I saw what was going on, I was like, yep, that's all you're running into because I could see it when I actually watched it run rather than show up after it broke. After, but yeah. which, it really stinks because it's so easy and so many of us do yep. the quilting too and then do not turn it back. The other thing that I came across was somebody was sputtering that uh, the design we were quilting on, they weren't trimming the stitches. She goes, oh, at least they could do is trim the stitches. And I said, well, that's a setting in your <laughs> machine. Uh, you can go in and turn that on and off. And the question was, where? So maybe you can show people where that is because we ran across. You were just there. Yeah, right. So we, can we have this camera in? Good. We ran across this again. Yeah, and so this, uh, it's just a friendly reminder. See the little scissors? That's and so you can actually change the you can change the tension for the embroidery that specific pat pattern right here mm -hmm. under tension. Mm -hmm. But that's end color trim and jump stitch trim. In Correct. some cases, you may want to turn them off. When, but in, when we are when we are quilting yeah. in the hoop, if you want I choose them yeah. to turn them off. Yeah. Um, and that, that was what happened. It was turned off, and we went into embroidery mode and had stitches and going. And that is one of the big differences between an NQ1400 versus the NQ1600, is jump stitch is not on a 1400. And if oh. you don't have jump stitch and you know what jump stitch is, you will not like not having it. Yeah, you won't live without it once you have but, it. That comes up and it trims all the little, yep. little threads for you so you don't have a mess afterwards. But, okay, is that, cool beans. Is that for turbo tips? Yeah, I'm sorry. It was oh, that's a, right. There was a lot of little whoopsie doodles I ran into. And, the, and, and, and like, yeah, I was going to say, and the. Because in the real world, this is what we run into. And now, we forget, there's too much to. Turbo tip today again comes from me from a from a question. When adjusting the pressure foot, how you want increments? Is it wise to do so? That's a good question, Deanna. Mm -hmm. And Jean has a question too. The um, the pressure foot height um, works. Um, I want to say there is built-in adjustments. It's not like half millimeter increments like you get on some adjustments. It's like seven and a half to ten. So it's going to be a fairly big adjustment, and you'll, you'll have a pretty good idea where it needs to be because the idea is you want that presser foot height to kind of to, skim to skim the skim. top of your piece. Skim your piece, not press down yes. on it and not be high above it, but to just skim just kind of skim piece. it, yeah. And so you want to get the closest um, um, height that you can for that. Yeah, and there are default settings. They will show. Jean is asking about default settings. They show up black yes. on the machine. And there is a way to do a, a complete re, uh, re, um, a reset, machine reset. A reset. But just keep in mind, any anytime it has a black background on your machine, that is a default setting. So you know that's where it started out at. Yep. I would caution against doing a complete default reset because there's stuff that might change that you forgot you changed. But yeah. Well, that was the yeah. whole weekend. Stuff yeah. we changed that we forgot to change back. Um, so you but, do. It does definitely affect your results. Yes. Absolutely. 
Um, Victoria has a question about our database design transfer program. Um, um, that sounds talk- like a you question. We talked about it on the show uh, a while ago. Yeah. When it first came out, I haven't played with it at all. It is it is free, Victoria. Um, the beauty of the database design transfer program is it doesn't cost you anything. It's an app you load up on your PC only, not your Mac world. PC of real computers. What it does is it allows you to see the icons of your programs. Um, of of just, your designs. Just like Thumbnailer does. Um, and it allows you to send the design wirelessly to those machines that have wireless capabilities like the Luminaire. If you have a Luminaire Victoria, it will move to that. If you, does have a area. if you don't already have in brilliance, it is a a great little pro- product for you. Um, if you've already gotten brilliance, you already have the transfer capability built into in brilliance. So I don't know why you need a second program. And that, that might be um, a good one to know too, if, if free because then one of the things we run into a lot is. People want to see what the design is, what's on the computer. Yes, and that will allow thumbnail. you that will allow you to see the thumbnail of it. Right, and if you already have thumbnailer, then I don't see the need to get design database on there as well. But if you do not have thumbnailer, and you, then it's definitely a perk to seeing your designs on a PC. And I only think it works with um, PESs. So those of us who have more than PES files on our machine, database design transfer kind of leaves me in the dust, and that's why I use Brilliance for my transfers. But it's it's easy to use, very easy to download, and uh, it's free. So. All right. To workbench. Hope that answers your question, Victoria. The workbench. Workbench. All right. This is a really this is one of those kind of obscure things, but it's interesting. That's I, my whole life. This and I week. ran into this again this Obscure, week because uh, this was based again on a uh, customer stopping and with problems. Um, now, what you'll this is kind of going to be for old school people because what I've got here are two different bobbins. Now, I, there's a third bobbin option that I don't have for a long arm, but for a Paper. sewing machine, you're going to have two options. There's a plastic bobbin and a metal bobbin. Now, in a long arm world, you have plastic bobbins, metal bobbins, and there's steel bobbins. Oh, we, I was going to thought you were going to say cardboard. Um, yeah, pre-wounds. There's some cardboard, and, and, too. and what I'm about to explain to you does also apply to pre-wounds. This is a very interesting, it's what they call backlash. And this is why, if you're one of those people that's like, I'm only going to use steel bobbins because there's steel bobbins and they're the best, it might not be the best for your machine. There's physics. This is a fun physics lesson. You know why? Because these... Well, both of these are the same size. One of these weighs more than the other. Can you guess which one? It's going to be the metal one. The metal, metal one? The metal weighs more than the plastic. No way. And now this, in all honesty, is, doesn't seem like a big deal. You put them in your hand, you might be able to feel the difference in weight. And it may not seem like a big issue um, when you're just thinking about it. But let me give you a, a very interesting um, example of what happens. I'm going to put this. Now, most bobbin cases are drop-ins now. This is actually a long arm case so that I can show this to you. Um, I really like the. Let me see if I can do the this. side ones. So if you, I'm going to put, put it right here because I don't want you looking at my, my nasty chin. Right about there. How does that look? Yeah, he wants us to show off his, his, his and, T-shirt. I, I, no, okay. So watch what happens when I pull this with a little bit of speed. Just want, look, look inside. You're going to look right inside there. You see oh, that? you made a mess. Made a mess. Now, there's, there's a backlash spring in here. When you put this in your machine, this gets put down, and there's a spring that keeps that from happening on a long arm. You don't have that on a regular sewing machine. Huh. But you're holding it upside down. I'm holding it upside down, but now watch what happens. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with a plastic bobbin. I'm going to pull it the same way I just did that one. Watch what happens. So you're going to look inside here again. It didn't overspin nearly as no, much. No, it did not. Because it weighs less, that inertia of spinning it, it stops quicker. 
Now, like I said, in a, in a long arm machine, if you look in here, there's a spring. So that, the heavier you so, are, the longer it takes you to stop. If you, yes. <laughs> so in a long arm machine, this spring presses it. And actually, this is a backlash spring. Without the spring in a long arm, you will have messes every time it stops and changes direction. That um, that's what this Want to race later? <laughs> <laughs> but um, but that's uh, so that's the importance of using the proper bobbin. So if you've got a machine that was designed to use steel bobbins, it will probably use plastic bobbins without an issue, because the inertia you're not going to have that backlash issue. If you have a machine that was designed to use plastic bobbins, you may find that steel bobbins cause you problems happy. you get tangles and things start to happen Gosh, because every so time you stop the go wrong. every time you stop the machine if you're if you're cruising along at a high speed and you stop the machine and you have a steel bobbin instead of a plastic that extra inertia may over rotate and you get a, a jumble in your bobbin so that's just like i said that was just a quick it's a real weird minor thing but i see this a lot that's also the reason why a lot of times you'll find a lot of success with pre-wound bobbins because pre-wound bobbins especially like the cardboard ones they don't have any weight aside from the thread. The plastic pre-wound bobbins um, tend to have a thinner shell, so there's not a lot of extra inertia, so you're not worried about over-rotation. Like I said, machines are designed to take that into account by the way it sits in the bobbin hole, but if you're if you're using the, a, a steel bobbin when your machine was intended for a plastic, you may run into these occasional problems just because it's it was it was designed for because physics, inertia. Now, I don't remember where I saw this, but um, several shows ago, we learned from Brent that we shouldn't use our pre-wound bobbins more than once. And I confessed I did. I had been loading them. And uh, he said, thou shalt not do that, Becky. And I've been much better at tossing them in the trash, which is really sad. But do you know they just, somebody, I wish I could remember where, unless I dreamed it, came out with pre-wound bobbins that are reusable. Yeah, they probably just put them on regular plastic. Yeah, so so now, it's something for you, for people like me who don't want to throw away my bobbin, uh, there are pre-wound reusable bobbins out in the world and, today. And I and cannot remember who I I don't know if we covered it at the, when we were talking about that, but I'll just cover it again when we're talking about bobbins. Bobbins wear out. Plastic bobbins, metal bobbins, they will all wear out. And the easiest way to check your bobbin, it's you can do this on a regular machine. You put it in the bobbin case, and this was spring loaded. I don't know, yeah, you got that idea. This one is spring loaded, so it's sticking up a little bit, but when I press it down, it go it's underneath the top lip of the case. If you have a bobbin, especially metal bobbins, you start to see this, they'll start to spread over time. So even when you press it down, it still sticks up a little bit. What do the plastic ones do? Plastic ones usually just break. Oh. So a plastic, but even plastic ones will start to spread a little bit. And if they spread to the point where they're really where they're above the lip of your your, your bobbin case, oh. you you will start to have problems. Now you've got to, uh, admittedly, you've got to be using them for quite a while. I usually see this more on met steel bobbins because somebody's inherited it from their great aunt who had inherited it from their mother. So you've got this steel bobbin that's been in circulation for 50 years. And for some reason it doesn't work, it's because it's spread out. It's, yeah. um, and you'll run into this more with bobbin th with um, finer threads. Because you can pack a finer thread in there and that's going to spread it out more. Um, so if, you're, if your tension is too tight, if your tension on your bobbin winder is too tight and you're using like an Invisifil or a deco bob that's really thin, that will um, that can spread your bobbin. So just be aware of that bobbin spread. Interesting. Interesting. That's, so when a bobbin wears out, you can see it. it it's going to stick above the uh, bobbin Victoria case Victoria has had a question for us. I, I, yeah. She wants to know how to get the activation code for the quilt program, but I'm not sure what she's referring to. <laughs> Victoria, what quilt program? Is it the quilt pro? Is it the brother or the... Um, and brilliance? I don't know. I don't know what she's... If you could clarify what you mean by the quilt program, maybe we can... Help you out. Sorry, Victoria. Not and that's sure what, what you're brings me to one of the things. Is one of the things that I find interesting is that, is a lot of these like with brother they're moving to like activation codes. Let yeah. me get an activation code. Yeah. Activate this feature on my scanner cut, yeah. for example. Well, they're doing a lot in breaking out components of their bigger software pieces like BES4. Yes. They're taking and they're breaking it out into smaller segmented. Uh, but what I'm also pieces, what I'm, which I think is a good idea, but. What it's I've, a little late for those of us who have already sprung. And yeah, but the other problem I run into with that is, um, and I'm seeing this in Brother because I sell them, and I don't know if this problem is, exists elsewhere, but I also know that Brother's um, 
So they like to try things. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I that springs to mind immediately is the stitch regulator from about five years ago. Okay. They they'll come out with a product. And they're like, this is a great new product, and then they'll find in about a year and a half that it doesn't work like they think it should, or it's not putting out the numbers they wanted to, and so they discontinue it. So, so like that, and so you saw that with actual hardware like the um, stitch regulator. They do it with their software too, which is irritating. So you're like looking at like this really cool functionality that you can you can turn on on your scan and cut say, and then they realize well nobody's paying for it it's not really working so they just discontinue it. So you might see like oh let me get this fun this you you're watching a YouTube video where they're doing something really cool but the video is like three years old and it's got a functionality <laughs> that they're no longer supporting. Yeah, I've run into that with a couple things. Um, so yeah, let me look at the um, Victoria. So she's she's looking at Brothers Advanced Quilt Design. Yes, is that one of those things they pulled out of? Um, no, that's going to be something I know. I know that it's new. I got to do a little bit because the other thing to understand is, well, we're getting into but what's fascinating when you go to the Brother things. I think Brother makes a fantastic machine, but the Japanese don't understand some stuff. Like it was funny to when I went a few years back. Um, red work. They just, the idea of red work. What is red work? Oh, it's just red thread in a quilt, basically, is how I understand. <laughs> they thought it was more than that. <laughs> and so well, there was it like, is more than that. Yeah, but, but quilting was never, um, quilting wasn't really on the radar for Brother for quite a while. Right. Yeah. And then you saw them start slapping Quilt Club on a machine. Well, they didn't really understand quilting. They just knew they needed to market quilting. So they would slap quilting on something. Okay. And so what you're starting to see is um, like that advanced quilt design. I want to take a look at it because... I it, haven't run into it yet. Um, I know it's a fairly... Because I'm thinking fairly, I watch this stuff constantly, but I have not... I think Victoria, it's a I'm going to have to look into that. I think it's a fairly new product, and it's one of those, they're trying to get into that quilt space now. They're starting to realize the idea of, uh, that luminaires are fantastic for edge-to-edge -edge quilting. Which I don't think the engineers of the Luminaire really understand what that means. It's an American. My thing. guess is if it's a paid program, she's going to have to buy the activation code. Um, but I yes. simply, a lot like of, simply yeah. applique. Yeah. You, you know, and there's another version that we were just eyeing the other day, me and Danny, yeah. that they came out that included a. I don't know. They're taking and they're breaking out little segments and then remarketing it as a little segment. Because they realize because nobody that, wants to pay the big bucks for yeah, all of it. Nobody at wants once. to pay fifteen hundred bucks for a right. program they're only so going to use. So they're breaking it down. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll definitely look into that because I know squat about it. Yeah. My my personal opinion is probably going to be I don't need it because I already have a cool design yeah. program. But I, <laughs> but that doesn't mean it doesn't. I'm I'm going to take. Think, I'm, I'd be curious to look at it because, like I said, I know that brother has just finally really kind of embraced the idea of quilting. That I think they finally under kind of have a better grasp on it. Yeah. So some so of their stuff is actually making more she's sense. Saying for quilting. I saw it on Angela Wolf. Angela yeah. Wolf. Okay. Yep. I watch Angela Wolf. Thank you, Victoria. I'm going to check that out for you. But I've been anyway, bugging you about Angela Wolf. I know. Wolf. That was on my to-do list yesterday that I got sidetracked because other things. Okay. Thank you, Victoria. I'm going to check that out. Needle threaders. Okay. All right. Cool beans. I don't know. Should we get, do you want to get into the other stuff? What or time are we save at? Oh, what gosh. What quarter after? Well, uh, I, you know, let's just talk about it real quick. Okay. Okay. Um, can you put this in? Just, yeah. Just quickly one of these other i feel like it's been like a real morning show this morning we like talked about stuff well you know. it's a lot of good stuff though um a lot of times we forget those of us with the dream machine and up about the scanner let me get you a hoop out for just a second okay am i just loading this up yeah we're going into broader mode this again is i'm going to tell you this and this is no lie this is the truth I had my dream machine for years before I knew the scanner worked in a hoop. You should be embarrassed. I thought, I, due to the brilliance of my education from my dealer, that the it, scanner was for bringing stuff into my machine to make like applique. Yeah. That's I, what I thought it was for. Blame, that's fine. I I'm blaming was, my dealer educator. Just I, saying. yes, because I sometimes just assume things that everybody's like, oh, yeah, everybody knows that. So, but apparently not. Like the, no. easy, like the easy angle is the greatest tool ever invented. I think everybody knows how to use it, but like, what is that? No, we don't. So I have to tell you, 
By the way, I'm going to plug her a little bit today because this her designs are amazing and we're getting more and more in the store. This um, is, which one am I loading up in here? This is the work the workshop we, we took this uh, this last week. There you go. Christine Dennell. Dennell? Dennell. We brought a couple of her designs in. This was a three-day workshop we had, and we had to choose either the Christmas version or the winter version. Becky chose winter version. And... Um, Anyway, one of the things that she teaches you is how to line stuff up in the hoop. Because as you can see, there's multiple hooping on these things. And they are beautiful, Bev. Thank you. This is not a beginner project. It is not. In fact, she wants you to know your machine. Um, yeah, Victoria, well, I do now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Where were you two years ago? Um, <laughs> One of the things she, she she does a lot is aligning multiple files, like that train, so it all lines up evenly. And we're going to be doing some of this in, in Frosty, too, so I thought it fit in well. But what she doesn't do, get out of here, what she doesn't do is show you how to do it if you have a brother machine in a scanner. She's from the Bernina world. No. She's a Bernina ambassador. She's a great designer. And this she's is from why, the Bernina world. But this is why Brother Dream Machines are so... like I, I won't. This one that came in used is not going to be in the store probably for another week. Because when people know that I have them and they're looking for one, they're gone. Yeah. Because the new Essence, which replaced the Brother, the Dream Machine, still has imaging built in. But you, but you need to use your, a, a cell phone camera and a special hoop for it. So it's a... It's the pro, it, the the process is still it, the the functionality is there, but it's a little bit more convoluted. Whereas on the on the Dream Machine, it's all right there. And the only other play, way to get this scanner is with a Luminaire. So if you want to get into you a get, scanning you, yeah, machine a, for you, under for under twelve grand, with you've got to go models, with the used Dream Machine. With the other models, you would use a. Um... An there's iPad, a, yeah, there's an app. Phone. Yeah, there's an app. There's an app for that. Yeah, there's an app. And it works. I've messed around with it. There's probably a video a few years old where I've played with it a little bit so you can get a feel for now, it. Now, you're not going to actually... Should we get that out of the archive? You, I don't even know where the archive ended up, but yes, you could. We're not going to actually... Do you want like a, a magnetic hoop for this? No, I don't. Okay. I'm... I just want to show how we align it, not necessarily. This uh, is not how we it. did it in class. We did oh, not. You might need to loosen that hoop a little oh, bit. Apparently, I do. We did not hoop them. I'm kind of enjoying watching class. you wrestle it, but I you know. know. In class, just so you know, when when uh, Claudia teaches this, she hoops the fabric and she floats the stabilizer. Yep. So of course, I mean, we were rebels. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna hoop my stabilizer. I'm gonna float my fabric. She actually had us make a video for her. She, Right, Brenda? Yes, absolutely. She asked us to, to sit there and do a video for her because she had never thought of doing this this way before. But So I was so, quite, so, quite pleased with so my you're, little game. You're famous now. You're more famouser than your YouTube. How famous are we? Do you have, what, 500 people that follow this I, now? Uh, no. Um, but I mean, today, not, I'm just going to show you the alignment. There we go. Beating it to submission. Wow. I got a rubber mallet. Okay, want to put that on there? Yep. Now, she has us, and likewise, when we do Frosty, we have marks on our fabric to tell us where to get going. Now, if you don't have a scanner, what you have to do is you have to hoop it very carefully. Yes. Notice I am not straight. I am very crooked there. What, what am I loading for design? You were going to go to Snow Country Express. Yeah. I'm going to put the screen up, Eddie. Snow Country Express. Why is it? Snow Country Express. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, I love this. I love technology. What did okay, you well, our screen isn't working. This is this is a real good uh, sales pitch for this machine. Oh my lord. Yeah, all of a sudden nobody wants it. It doesn't yeah. like your stand. Does a home button even work? No. It I don't know what... Is is it my stick because it was on the Luminaire it and it's a be. big stick? And it, it probably is exactly I like that. my sticks nuts and big. Well, I'm just going to have to... If it doesn't work, see, this is... Yeah. 
Okay. We'll, do, we'll just fire it up real quick. We should be good. All right. Johnson, if it's not, what off. what I would do first of all is I would scan my fabric because I can because I have a scanner. Eddie, that the talking and stuff. <laughs> we have to. There we you go. Yeah, okay. the scanner. Winter, winter, or Christmas. Winter. Which one? Borders. Borders. Top border. Top border. Number one. Number one. Okay, center car. Now, the other thing that's cool about this, for those of us with larger hoops people, is don't be afraid to bring in more than one design. Like those of us who have the 14 and 16 inch hoops. Am I, I don't, this? I don't want to, you can scan now, yep. I don't want to okay. sit there and load one choo-choo car in at a time because I don't have and to. And scanning on this is just the push of a, a button. button. Instead of messing around with cameras and hoops it, and all it that. It literally is. And what you're going to see is it's going to pick up those blue lines that I've drawn on my fabric. And in her design, she has alignment lines built into the design, um, which if you go to edit and move... Oh, yeah, you got I, your I, grid turn on. I would not have my grid on when I'm skiing. Yeah, and I'm looking at that. I'm like, it didn't pick up the picture, but then I realized that we have it in white. So there's that. I turned my grid off. Okay. To me, that's distracting. All right, so there's that. Okay. And then you want to move it? In her design, you see how she's got a stitch line across the top of the train? How come I can't see my blue lines? I don't Brent? know. That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> on her train she has built in an align on this particular car and she does that on all her designs which which is brilliant but i can then use that straight line that she's given me to place with a grid is how she does it i can use it to place with the blue line i put on my fabric and every every train car that comes in has an alignment line in it so i I can be straight even though Brent can't see my blue line. Yeah, that's weird. I've never run into this. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> because that's just the way Okay, going. well then. The idea is you would see that blue line and then I could just move my car or rotate it to oh, line. Oh, there it is. I can kind of see it. Let me... Is it just light? Maybe yeah, you need really to light, change yeah. the color of it. Change the color of what? The, the background? Well, that won't help because it's the image that we scanned is the problem. Oh, you know what? It's because of all the studio lights, I bet. Yeah. That, you know, if we had, that's exactly what it is. You've got a big studio light shining down. When you're scanning, you do not want any other direct light on. Want to try it again by shutting that light you off? You can kind of see the blue line over here. Yeah, but okay. I bet, I bet, yeah. If we it's turn this it's off. because of the studio light. I bet if that gets turned off, that'll make a big, um, big difference. If you have too much lighting in your room... Anything like finding your snowman or scanning your your uh, stuff doesn't work as well. I've had a window with the shade pulled up, and I get, can't find snowman, can't find snowman. Yep, and see, there you go. Now you can kind of see it on there. You can um, see it better. Yeah, let me actually. So now what you're able to do... Is you can kind of, kind see, of see that. It. Yeah, you could have also blown yeah. it up with your percentages. It's already at 150, but we'll blow it up again. So you okay. can see that blue line on there, kind of. Kind of. Um, and so what we're going to do... So if you pan back up towards the... Oh, shrink it down and pan a little bit. You'll yeah. see see the black line along the tutu between the car and the roof? Yeah, so you've got this black line here. Yeah, that's an alignment line. And you kind of see this blue line here. Yep. That's the, the blue line is what we put on our piece. Yep, so then you can use your alignment tools to go ahead and line that up because you've scanned in... The, the scanning. Yep, so I'm going so to bring this down cool. to here and kind of move that over to here. And you can do rotate. And I'm going to have to rotate a little bit because we're not quite perfectly straight. Yeah, the... but that, see, all that's done after I get to my machine. I'm not fiddling so, and diddling. Yeah, and if you. Yeah, and this I'll... is where, if I'm going to baste, I'm going to add the basting stitch after I do the alignment. Just yep. as a good habit. So now because we've got those black lines lined up with our blue. Yep. Um, so points. now if you brought in another, just real quickly, again, it's the beauty of the scanner. Add in, um, back to snow country, um, winter, borders, top, oh, whoops. whoops. Right. 
went to the wrong one. Watch a top row. There's a lot of stuff. First top row, sledding or s'mores? No, not top row, borders. Oh, borders. It's a new border here, top row. Top border. First one? Yep. Number two. Number two, okay. The gift car. Yep. So when he comes in, see that, see, well, they're on top of it, but see the little curly cue down below it? If you move it. Yeah. That's what you use to line up with the other car. Yeah, this little piece right here. Yeah. Now. So we're in a small hoop right now. Yeah, so it's not going to let us, but we couldn't right. that up to line up with But you yeah. see, I have, this is how you would do multiple alignments in one hoop using your scanning feature and you move keys. Yep. You're not taking it in and out. You're not putting grids on your thing. You're not, you're not doing any of that. And you can literally get them all lined up beautifully without going back and forth in a hooping thing. Yep. And let's see, Victory said, um, I have worked a few of her designs. Don't like the way she shows you to place designs. I'm a big fan of templates. Yeah, we yeah. kind of showed her different ways to place the designs, Victoria, and it was kind of fun because I think, I think she was surprised. At one point she said, I never thought of that. So I'm like, yeah, that's how we that's roll in yep. at FPQ land. It's right, FPQ land. <laughs> like, subscribe, tell your friends about us, all that stuff. Um, we, cha Eddie. we changed things up a little bit. And it was fun. You know, I was going to say, can you bring this one in? All right, so that's all I had. That's okay. Well, yeah, look at that, we're cool. at 9.30. We're doing good. All right. Hope you all learned it. something tonight. Today. Like this morning. This morning. Oh, I'm working on getting a special guest on here. It's taking some arm twisting. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna kind of pump her a little bit, and then she watches it. She, like, you shouldn't have said anything. Oh goodness. And no, it's not. It's gonna. It's probably gonna be. Uh, probably in a, about a month or so. But you know who the free motion on that really nice panel? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get her to come on here and talk about free motion quilting because she's awesome. Oh, that would be exciting. Oh, yeah. And if you see her work, it's, she was in here. She's like, do you think this is good enough? And I'm like, holy cow, woman, that's fantastic. Nice. And she's like, you're so kind. <laughs> she's, no, really, she's now. a sweetheart. And I'm trying to convince her that she wants to come play on YouTube with us. But anyway, that we may have a special guest coming up, I'm hoping, in the next month or so. Sweet. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. And I think our door just opened, so that means we have to... Um, we have to, to go wrap to, it up and I gotta get to work. Do real work. Yes. Yeah. So Thank thanks you, for joining Victoria. us. Thanks for joining I'm us for another get, episode get of Shenanigans. That, getting on that remember, design software. Remember to sew on and be excellent to each other. Toodles. Oh.